hello guys welcome back to the channel now today i have a very exciting maybe informative and maybe a bit opinion based video for you guys king crisis tv let's go you are watching king crisis tv today was apple's september quarter apple event in which they discuss new products they will be launching for the quarter yada 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 so on and so forth and it was a bit exciting and boring i had mixed feelings i will be going through why i was excited why i had mixed feelings how i feel about the devices maybe give a little spec review of the devices even though you guys if you watched it already you would have seen the specs or if you're going to watch it you will see the specs more in details even though I don't think they really gave any specifications, but you get the gif. So without any further ado, let me dive right into this video, King Crisis style. Now the first product which they discussed in the launch event was Apple TV Plus. And I know you guys on my channel don't really care about Apple TV Plus, so I will brush right over that topic and go right into the tech related stuff. So as it relates to the tech related stuff, they first discussed the new 2021 iPad lineup and this year they will be releasing a new iPad which is the average iPad and also a brand new iPad mini. Now the iPad mini is what caught my attention. So the iPad mini has a way better design than the regular iPad which they will be releasing this year. It also have a USB type C charging port. I don't know if the generation before has that or it didn't. I will put a some wording up here if it does because I'm not sure I don't have any iPad or have ever owned an iPad mini. Also, it has a very sleek design. It looks like the iPad Pros. Unlike the iPad, the regular iPad, which looks like some of the iPads from the older generations with the regular touch ID on the front of the device, the thick bezels. It looks like a miniature version of the iPad Pro and I, I like that. The Apple iPad mini also features a 12 megapixel camera and now has the new Apple software or camera feature called Center Stage in which the camera will track a subject with its wide angle camera so the subject will always be in frame. It's like cropping into a portion of the video and ensuring that the subject is always in frame by utilizing cropped section of the entire video section that the camera can capture. Meanwhile, it is focusing on that smaller cropped version if you're understanding what i'm saying the camera on the ipad mini is also able to shoot 4k videos 4k but what apple didn't state in their launch event and infos is what kind of 4k videos will be captured on the device what's what's the frame rate so on and so forth also the apple mini features stereo sound and we all know that apple products has a wide array of accessories such as cases um, dongles you know it and the apple pencil the ipad mini also supports the latest apple pencil which i think is at the second generation currently because apple pencil is quite new to the ecosystem so yes the apple mini supports apple pencil version 2 i think so let's do a brief overview of the regular ipad since we just bloated in the wonders of the iPad mini which looks so sexy. The iPad mini will be coming in at a price of $499 which is technically $500 in USD. So that's not a bad price and that is for the base model. When, when I say base model, I mean the base storage model because that's how Apple does it. It's not like Android where you can get like 6 gigs of RAM or 8 gigs. It, with Apple, it's all the same gigs of RAM, whatever. Only the storage differentiates what makes the, a product better than the other in the same lineup. So I think the base storage for the Apple iPad mini 2021, I think it's 128 gigabytes. And the price for that base model is... 
$499 or $500 USD. So a little brush over the regular iPod for 2021, which is the standard iPod that we all know and love, which I don't love by the way. It doesn't really has anything new. It's the same old iPad. It's the same Touch ID on the front, the same thick bezels. They may add a new software feature, yada, yada, yada. Maybe change the sensor of the camera. I'm not even sure if they did that. They spoke a little about something called True Tone that's pretty much not really relevant to me because I don't care about that. My glasses already adjust my light and my blue light filter. I don't care about that. And yeah, they spoke about the regular iPad getting center stage, that new camera crop following subject thing I spoke about earlier in the iPad mini. So if I were you, I would get the iPad mini over the regular iPad, even though the price for the regular iPad, I think is $329 for the base version, as I stated earlier with the storage and all that stuff. So it's $329 or $330. So it's way cheaper than the iPad mini, but the iPad mini is offering way more than the regular iPad. I don't really know why they call the iPad mini the iPad mini and call that one the iPad because it's confusing. Next, oh, and before I move on to the next item on the list, the regular iPad for 2021 is only able to utilize the Apple Pencil first generation, which sucks. But it's able to utilize the Apple keyboard and the Apple Magic Mouse. So I guess that makes up for it not being able to use the latest Apple Pencil and having such conky appearance in 2021. There's one thing I don't like about how Apple talks about their products. Um, it's they don't really disclose the exact speed of their processor and so on and so forth. The amount of RAM their, their product will feature. Um, I don't know if it's because they don't think the consumer needs to know that or they don't think it's important because it's Apple. But for me as a tech guy, I would like to know the amount of RAM I will be getting, um, the gigahertz, the processor will be giving me the speed, so on and so forth. We know that Apple makes the fastest chipsets for smartphones and tablets, but at least give us some tech stuff like the gigahertz and so on and so forth for people like me that is um, the simple persons I don't think it means a lot to them so let's move on to the other item which is the Apple watch they are now at series 7 and yes I'm reading from this thing here because I took some notes while I was watching the event that's the only way I would retain so much details anyways and the series 7 they say it has the largest display ever on a Apple smartwatch. It's true, it's it's pretty large. I'm gonna maybe post a picture of it or a video somewhere on the screen meanwhile I speak like some cool b-roll stuff. Um, they say with it having a larger display that will allow it to have larger buttons so it doesn't feel as conky and dinky touching that little screen to touch buttons which is very annoying. I'm not a fan of smartwatches. I think it's ridiculous. That's my opinion though. I'm sorry if I offend anyone who likes smartwatch, but that's my opinion. A watch is supposed to tell time and the date and maybe alarm once in a while. I don't need something to text and whatever, whatever. I have my phone for that. And 99% of the time I have my phone with me. So I don't need a watch to substitute in case I leave my phone. So yeah, you get the gif. Anyways, let me get back into talking about the tech stuff of the Apple Watch Series 7, which they say has the largest screen. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm saying they say. So they say it can support a full keyboard. They say it's crack resistant. I like that because I have some friends with Apple Watches and they always have issues with it breaking like after three falls or cracking or the glass shattering. So if it's crack resistant, that's a huge improvement over the previous generations. They say it's the first of their watch lineup to be dust resistant. Technically, when I was watching it, they say it's the first watch to be dust resistant, but we all know that's not true. Um, regular watches have been made dust resistant for years now. They should have said the first smartwatch or Apple watch 
because I know Samsung has been making smartwatch for a very, very long time. So if Samsung didn't have dust resistant in their watches, then <laughs> Samsung, you need to catch up. That's if Samsung didn't have it though. I, I'm almost certain Samsung has had dust resistant for a very long time. Next, um, they say the watch will have 18 hours of battery, pretty decent. And it will also feature a USB charging cable. So it will have the same MagSafe feature on the back, but the other end, which you plug into the brick, like the later Apple bricks for your iPhone and your iPads, it will be USB-C. I like the fact that they're slowly moving into USB-C. It's nice. Everything is USB-C nowadays. Apple is finally catching up. Also, the Apple Watch Series 7 comes in a very large variety of colors. There's a lot of colors. There's hundreds. I'm just kidding. It's not hundreds. It's about 10 or maybe a little more or less. I'm not sure, but it's not hundred. <laughs> um, especially for the bands. There are a lot of bands available for the new Series 7 Apple. Oh, cool thing. The bands for all the previous models of Apple Watches can fit the Apple Series 7 watch face. That's pretty amazing. I didn't expect that from Apple. Kudos to you, Apple. That's pretty cool. In the watch event, they brag about some fitness plus thing that I didn't really pay much attention to because I was there for the tech, but I'm a fitness person. I run, I used to run professionally, so I work out pretty often. I jog like five kilometers per day, push-ups, maybe do a little weight. So that fitness thing could be beneficial to me, but they say the Series 7 Apple Watch will be going for $399. That's $400 for a little watch. That's a bit expensive. Now let's move on to what a lot of us were anticipating for this watch event, which is the iPhone 13. Yeah, let's let the cat out of the bag so he can roam free and go scratch some persons and hiss and meow and make some noise and give a lot of trouble. Anyway, so iPhone 13, so similar to the iPhone 11, well, not the iPhone 11, the iPhone 12 rather, there will be four iPhone devices being launched for this quarter. The iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13 Pro, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Just like the 12 lineup, there will be four devices for the iPhone 13 series lineup. Now let's talk a little about the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 mini before we dive into the pro stuff. So the iPhone 13 and 13 mini will have larger batteries. That's what they say. But once again, they didn't give any specifications on what the size of this battery will be. I know that the battery of the previous iPhone generation, the iPhone 12 was. So if they say it's going to have a larger battery, I would um, expect a battery larger than this. Also, they say it will have a beautiful screen made of OLED, organic light emitting diode. Yeah, I think every phone nowadays is having beautiful screens though, especially Samsung. You cannot beat a Samsung display, Apple. Samsung actually makes your displays and LG. So you can't beat the maker. They spoke about their A15 Bionic chip, which is their latest chipset for their smartphone devices for 2021, which will also be featured in the iPad mini, the A15 Bionic chip. The regular iPad will have the A13 Bionic chip. I don't know why they didn't use the A14 in the iPad for 2021 or even the A15. Maybe they're at a chip shortage like most companies here in 2021 because of the situation. So the A15 Bionic chip will have six cores for the CPU, four cores for the GPU, and a 16 cores neural engine. Yeah, they spoke a lot about their new neural engine and machine learning and so on and so forth. So it can learn from how the way you type, the apps you use, the photos you take, so it can enhance your photos or utilize your specific photo style. They talk a lot about that in the new Bionic chip, the A15 chip for iPhone devices. Next, they spoke about the cameras on the iPhone 13 devices. It will have two cameras 
similar to its predecessor, the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 11. Um, you will have a wide angle 12 megapixel f1.6 camera and also a ultra wide camera. So the ultra wide camera will be 12 megapixel as well. Um, they spoke about some sensor shift image stabilization feature that will be featured in these new iPhones, the iPhone 13. But they didn't disclose a lot of information on that. I don't know if it will make the videos more stable because I think that's what stabilization means on a sensor. But instead of talking about the stabilization of photos and videos, they were talking about some color crisp and some stuff. They didn't mention anything about smoothness at all. Next, they talk about a very interesting mode. This mode for this mode, I would get an iPhone. I'm an Android user, I'm flexing here with my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus in 2021. But this mode will make me, or would make me rather, I don't think it's a big of a deal for me to switch from Android. This mode would make me switch to iPhone and it's a cinematic mode that they, they spoke a lot about it. They hyped about it, they brag about it. I think it's the biggest leap on the iPhone 13 so far. It's, I don't think, it is the biggest leap for the iPhone 13 so far. Above the A15 Bionic chip, I think this cinematic mode is the biggest new thing for the iPhone 13. And let me tell you why this is. So they spoke about the focusing of the camera sensor when shooting videos. I am not sure if it can be used in photography, but it was a lot of video examples that they used to speak about this feature. So what it does, if you have a subject in the foreground and you're locked into focus on that subject into the foreground, you can shift the focus from that subject into in the foreground onto somebody in the background of that video without having to change any manual settings. It's just with the tap of the screen and the focus can move from that person in the foreground's face or body or whatever to the subject or person in the background and if you tap it once it will switch focus if you tap it twice it will lock the focus so it doesn't go out of focus and another interesting fact that they spoke about with this feature is that you can correct the focus and the depth of field after this video is captured. Now that's that's golden because I don't think any camera, any mirrorless camera, cinematic camera nowadays is able to do that in which you can correct the focus of a video or subject after capturing that video. So this, this is breakthrough to technology and I am looking forward to experiencing it firsthand in the real world. I know it sounds good on paper but how does it perform in the real world scenarios? All right, let's move on. So we know the iPhone 13 will have 5G like last year's iPhone and they made it like a big deal like, eh, 5G, three quarters of the world don't have 5G as yet. So I don't think it's that much of a deal. So yeah, and they say the iPhone 13 mini will be 1.5 hours more than the iPhone 12 mini as it relates to battery duration. And the iPhone 13, the regular model, will have a 2.5 hours increase over the iPhone 12 last year generation. Well, this is a big claim from Apple, but it's not really a big jump. Well, for me, that is. Um, 2.5 hours, what if I decided to play more games on this new iPhone than I did on the other one? How will it stand up to the intensive use I am putting on the phone because the screen looks better? So, and they didn't tell us the size of the battery. I think I mentioned that before, but yeah. They only talk about 1.5 hours more than that generation and 2.5 hours more than that generation. Oh, 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 and something very important that i noticed that they didn't mention at all in the launch event is that the notch on the iphone has gotten smaller let me show you the iphone 13 versus the iphone 12 for comparison of the notch size so as you can see up here the iphone 13 has a smaller notch than the iphone 12 and all the iPhones before that, that has a notch. 
they're finally going somewhere with getting rid of that big old chin from the top of their phone. And I am proud of them. Apple, you're finally growing up. Next, so we know the new iPhone 13 will feature the MagSafe feature which they introduced back in the iPhone 12 last year. The iPhone 13 mini will be selling for $699, that is $700. And the iPhone 13, the regular model, will be selling for $799 or $800. And the base storage for the iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13 is now 128 gigabytes now. Samsung has been using this as their base storage for a very long while now. So it's time for the big boys or the big girls. The iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So the iPhone 13 Pro will be featuring a 6.1 inch display. So to me, the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max looks the same as the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It looks almost exactly the same from the back that is you will see the difference in the notch if you look at it from the front but the back it looks almost the same to me i am really happy that they kept the lidar sensor which gives them this depth um, advancement over all other smartphones currently on the market they kept it on the iPhone 13 and I really like that. So the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max will be available in four colors. Here are your colors. And Apple claims that the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max and the whole iPhone 13 lineup for this instance will be having industrial leading water resistance technology. Uh, that's, that's a bold statement to make Apple. Um, the last time I checked, your devices were the most susceptible to water damage. That's a really bold statement to make. Industry leading water resistance on an iPhone. <laughs> but let's, let's see how it holds up in real world scenarios when it hits the market before I make any assumptions. Remember guys, this, these are my opinions, okay? So the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max will be having a 120 Hz refresh rate screen. Now, even though they say this will be having 120 Hz refresh rate screen, you won't be able to control this 120 Hz refresh rate. It will be adaptive. So you can't go into the settings and tap a switch and it stays on 120 or whatever increment you want to set it it's adaptive the phone will put it in whatever refresh rate it feels is best for the scenario this is good for saving battery but for like a tech person like me i would like to tweak my refresh rate let's say i want to kill my battery faster and keep it at 120 so why can't i do that apple why can't i select my own refresh rate it's 2021 samsung allows me to do it so why can't you bad apple bad and as it relates to camera, apart from the whole cinematic mode, there is not much new to the Apple camera lineup. We all know that Apple already takes amazing photos and amazing videos. I, there's no doubt about that. And they spoke about the photos will be even better in this lineup because of some, the whole sensor stuff I spoke about earlier, the sensor stabilization stuff, and also because of the neural engine. The photos will look better. Um, I don't know how to describe this because they didn't put it into the most repetitive form for me to repeat it back to you, but just know the photos will look better. And they spoke something about some macro photography as well let me read my notes um yes macro photography so you will be able to take pictures of subject of up to two centimeters close so you can go up to two centimeters close to a subject to take photos all cameras will now have the night mode features and it will feature prores video in 4k 24 frames per second now this is beautiful the zoom are the same they will have three times zoom on the telephoto camera and six times zoom on the wide angle camera um, samsung is at 100 zooms now try to catch up apple so the battery life on the iphone 13 pro will be 1.5 hours more than the 12 pro from last year so it's same as the regular iphone 13 versus the regular iphone 12 last year and the pro max will have a 2.5 hour more than the 12 pro max from last year 
it they still didn't give any battery size for the pro variants of the new iphone they just gave hours more that it will last be compared to the versions from last year so the iphone 13 pro will be going for 999 dollars aka one thousand dollars and the iphone 13 pro max will be going for 10.99 which is eleven hundred dollars well i don't think this is much of an increase or decrease compared to last year i forgot what they launched at that last year so i can't make any assumptions there and they say the iphone 13 pro and pro max will be the first set of iphones to feature or introduce one terabyte of internal storage but the base storage on the iphone 13 pro and 13 pro max will be 128 gigabytes of storage so there you have it guys those are all the details i managed to skull from watching the apple event i hope you guys found these information useful and remember most of what i said are opinion based they are what i think apart from the statistics and the details that i gave you about the device so don't take anything too personal if you're an apple user um, i'm just here to give you guys content and insights on what to expect from the apple new products that will be available soon for purchase if you found this video interesting and entertaining please feel free to hit that like button and also that subscribe button so i can continue making more videos like these for you guys and if you mind you can share this video with a friend if they like iphone or even like samsung so i can grow here on youtube to provide you with more content skin crisis tv signing out You are watching King Crisis TV.